I'm here with my friend Elena. Hi. She's a peacekeeper. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Who happens to be a peacekeeper as well. We're up here in Idaho and uh, we're at Life Tree Natural Wellness Center, which is a inner city clinic um, mission, um, mission outpost to the city. And we get all kinds of different issues here, chronic disease, anything could come through here. It's actually under the indigenous nation. And so we're able to do some things that typically you might not see in a wellness kind of environment center. Um, we do all kinds of things here. We've got ozone therapy, vitamin C, um, intravenous therapy, uh, hyperbaric chamber, mm -hmm. um, massage, and of course upstairs. And hopefully tomorrow I can show you that aspect of it because tomorrow, if you come back, I'm going to have a special treat for you. We have Dr. Mead. He's one of the directors here and he wants to bring a few words at you tomorrow and I'll take you upstairs and you can see the herbal farmery, which is amazing. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. So Elena's here. Um, we both love food and we both cook here. And so um, what we're going to do is a few things here. And I ask, honestly, for your patience because our space is little. We have our camera on a tripod and we're kind of trying to juggle everything. So um, anyway, we're going to do the best that we can today. Romaine, and don't worry about the time because you're the last one this afternoon. So you can take the time and do as you need. It's fine. Okay. Oh, great. Praise the Lord. Good. So great. I wanted to um, introduce Elena and, um, you know, what, why don't we have prayer before we get started? I always like to invite God and um, our Lord into our midst and to bless our efforts. And because we really want to have him encourage and motivate our hearts to live healthier lives for him. So I'm going to go ahead and offer a prayer. Father God, we just want to thank you for this opportunity to share your health message and some beautiful, healthy food that you've given us. We ask that you would bless our hands, bless our time together, that it can be really enjoyable, and that you would just motivate us to have the zeal of the Lord for you and your soon coming and to get the message out there to help Amen. other people is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How's the volume, you guys? Are you hearing us okay? Okay. Uh, the way it works, I can't really move that too much closer. So anyway, I want to um, just have Elena share a little bit with you because, Elena, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am 73 years old, going on 74 in October. And I've been a vegan for about maybe 30, 35 years and <clears throat> came into the truth about that uh, long ago as well. Grew up in a home where, where it's a lot of fried foods and a lot of meat and a lot of milk and all that stuff. And then I became a, a vegan after I married an Adventist. And, and then the Lord just kind of walked me through phases of my life where I first was a vegetarian and then we cut out the, the cheese because we were, nothing was happening actually. And so I learned how to cook vegan from the ladies in the church. And then I opened my own restaurant for about seven years and had a wonderful experience. I praise the Lord for giving me that, that child. I never had children but he gave me Adam's Garden. <laughs> the restaurant was called Adam's Garden. And before we go any further with that, I want to show you something. Elena has a cookbook and it's phenomenal. One of the things that we do here at the center is that we really try to focus on food that is oil free. Yes. Now, typically, you know, I, you guys know, I think most of you that I am a raw chef. I'm a certified raw chef, but I also do vegan. I do use some um, extra virgin olive oil and some things like that in my cooking, even mm -hmm. sesame oil. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. there's certain tastes and flavors that, you know. Right. And uh, But for the center here, we do oil-free cooking, okay? And so her cookbook has predominantly oil-free recipes in here. And this is called her Adam's Garden to the Eight Essentials for Life. And so... We have this book available. It's $30. And how should they get a hold of you to get this book? 
maybe we can give Sandy the number and you can have that posted, um, I think. Would that be a good idea? Okay, then we'll do that. Um, and so I just wanted to share that because she's put a lot of effort into this beautiful cookbook and we use a lot of the recipes here at the center. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> so you had your restaurant and yes. this garden. She had a beautiful time. And yes. And then my husband and I, we decided that we were going to, uh, uh, well, the Lord decided that we were going to move out into the country. And so we did. And then, um, and actually it worked out very well because it was a family run restaurant. My mom, my dad, my mother-in-law and, and a couple of friends. And then uh, we decided to give up the business because they wanted to raise our rent really, really high. The lease was going to be too overwhelming for us, which was a blessing because then two years after that, we moved to Washington and my husband passed away. And so I was very grateful that I didn't have to be stuck with the lease for seven years. It was, it was just a blessing. And then we moved to Idaho and a bunch she's, of us people. And she's been involved here at Life Tree for, for 13, 13 years, years now. And she has been a total blessing here and a blessing to me. And we have a lot of fun in the kitchen. Yes, yes, we do. <laughs> so yes, we do. We put I love out it. some beautiful food. If you'd like to see pictures, so I post them on my fan page, Charmaine Vieira. And I also have a private tribe for those of you that are interested in doing more intensive challenges. You want to really focus on building a healthier body, building super immunity weight loss and maybe dealing with some health issues that you might have that uh, we really try to focus on supporting and encouraging you to reach your health goals. So today we have just a few recipes for you and we're starting some things today that we're going to finish and taste tomorrow. So you got to show back up. <laughs> and I always like to start out with juice because of my own health journey. And I think a lot of you that have seen me on, um, with uh, Tara Bella have heard my story. I've had breast cancer and it's been 17 years. It's Praise just the Lord. amazing. 17 years, a survivor of double negative breast cancer, as well as um, over a year ago, I had some really big health challenges with toxicity. I tell you what, I was just toxic and becoming very ill um, with agripesticides. I did not realize the apples I would work was eating were covered in chemicals and I was mm. eating these non-organic apples every day, you know, using 10 or more a day to juice, like I'm going to demonstrate here. And, and um, it just really took a toll on my health to the point to where I was becoming bedridden. My memory was just completely shot, but I made some changes. I did a detox and um, I am organic and non-GMO. And I believe in that's important, especially nowadays. And I have some beautiful food here. I hope you can see it, but can y'all see it? <laughs> but I'm gonna make some things here. First, we're gonna start out with the juice. I think I'll move these cabbages because we're not gonna start with that. I have some beautiful food here. Is that in the picture? I think it is. So we're gonna make some juice. I think juice is really important. Um, what it does is it gives you a concentrated nutrition. You're getting those living enzymes, those nutrients, those minerals, those phytonutrients without the problem of having to digest and worry about the fiber. And so it's, it really frees your system up to focus on healing without that digestion. Saturates your cells, gets in Charmaine? the Uh-huh. Charmaine, uh, we need to see more of the table. We can, I can just barely see, if you could tilt the camera down oh. just a little bit. I see a lot of you. Is that better? No. no. Tilt. Tilt the camera. Tilt, tilt, tilt it down a little bit more. If the tape, I can see a yeah. whole bunch of your roof. <laughs> can you see us? Can you? That's good. Better? Yeah, that's better. Much okay. better. Thank and you. And our, okay. Head's not chopped off, right? <laughs> okay. So 
we're going to demo our juice and I've already told you nutrient dense, beautiful. Look at the colors. You guys can see the colors and you're getting all the benefits of those colors that God put in the plants that protect the plants from oxidation and plant diseases when it's on in, in the earth. And when we eat those, those colors, when we take in those colors, we assimilate the benefits. So they go to work to protect our memory, to protect our heart, to cleanse our liver, to help our eyes, to help our digestion, to, to give us a youthful glow. A lot of times you'll see people that juice and eat a lot of raw food have a lot of glow. That's because their skin and, and the plants have electrical halos, halos of light around the plant cells that we assimilate when we take in the plants. So I'm gonna make some juice and we need a jump start anyway to get going on this cooking thing. So we're gonna make ourselves some juice. <laughs> mm. All right. So this, by the way, is an Omega juicer. I really love it. I had a Rebel. I love that too. But my pulp, I think, I think that blade, it dulls after a while. And my pulp was just getting so wet. You know, I decided to get an upgrade. And this is definitely an upgrade. And the pulp is much drier. Oh, it's quiet here too. It's quiet. It, um, yeah, it is. So you'll see here. So we've got some celery going in. What else do we need? You know what, sis? Maybe you can cut up that beef for me. So we've got our carrot going in. <laughs> we knew we were going to have fun with this today. This knife is, yeah, we're not exactly in our element, but I've got some ginger. Okay, ginger is anti-inflammatory. So we've got a nice piece of ginger. Celery fights cancer. Celery juice, very healing. Of course, you've got your carrots, a beta carotene in here. You want to do some of these? Yes. I don't know how much you take in that. Okay, then we have some beet tops. And sign of good digestion. Here's a little trick for y'all. After you drink beet juice or eat beets, if your urine is pink or red or your stools, that means your digestion isn't optimal. Because if you're digesting truly all of it, you would not have the phytochemicals coming out in, in your stools or in your urine. So we're putting in our beet toss. You want some more of that? Yeah. Okay. Another thing we could have added in here, I don't have it handy right now, um, is an apple. You can add an apple. That oh. will give it some sweet. That oh, would yeah. be yummy. Oh, yeah. But I think to get around all this equipment to get one might be a little challenging. Unless you want to try, but... I think we're good with carrots. I think we're good. Yeah, the carrots are nice and sweet. Okay, so I mean, think about it. If you can add a cup of juice a day, because our food nowadays is grown on soil that is devitalized. The external metabolism of our earth is so over over processed. It's over overworked. overworked, and we're not getting the minerals. We're not getting those vital, the dust of the earth is what we've been created of. And we're not getting those fat in our food because the earth is so devitalized that we're not getting what we need. And when you don't get what, what you need, when you have nutritional deficiencies, and then on top of that, the toxicity, you have disease, disease. Okay, so we have our juice and it is looking beautiful. And here we go. And here you are, my dear. Oh, we did. We didn't put a whole bead in there. Maybe we should put a little piece of bead. We didn't even put any. Yeah, we need a bead. We need a bead. Okay, so we're gonna put a couple of beads in here. Put the bead top. So, a couple of beads. Did you make enough to share? I'm sorry. This is a virtual vicarious. <laughs> I'm very disappointed. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. 
don't throw your pulp away. It makes great cracker crackers and you can add some like some vegan mayonnaise and make a mock salmon of that. You know what we're gonna need is a rag. To clean that up. Okay, so we've got some beet in there. Now compare that to a Coca-Cola. When you look at that, see that? I mean, that is light. Do you feel it? It is light. <laughs> you gotta feel that. <laughs> Here you go. Toast. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Yum. I you know, it. I love it. ginger. I love the it's ginger. Great. That's yeah. it. It's the ginger. Oh, oh. Yummy, yummy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That is our juice. Okay. There's no rhyme or rhythm to juice. Do what you have on hand. Do what tastes good. You can add apple to that, pineapple. One thing I like to do is to save my core. When I eat the pineapple, it save that core. You can juice it right in here. We're going to get set up for our next recipe, which is we're going to be making some kimchi. Eating your fermented foods is a good idea. And sis, you know what we didn't get is a probiotic for the kimchi, right? But we're just soaking it. That's tomorrow. Okay. Um, eating your fermented foods creates natural good gut flora. And so really important as we talk about gut health, as we talk about assimilating all the benefits of this juice, it will be due to the fact that our gut is in optimum shape our gut microbiome is healthy and that we're able to digest our food really well. Mm. One, one right. thing that I've found uh, in making juice is that uh, sometimes people are kind of accustomed to soda pop. Okay. And if you add a beet, a real strong beet, uh, no, not a beet, I mean a radish, a real strong radish to your juice, It'll give it a little bit of a soda pop taste. Oh, kind really? Of, kind of a burning in the back of your throat. That's very much like soda. Huh. Wow. Okay, give us one minute as we get set up for our next recipe. I'll just stick that in there for now. Okay. And we can bring our food processor over because we're going to use okay. that. So you get to see all this stuff in real time today. We're going to actually make this in front of you. Okay. All right. I'm going to need a pretty good bowl. Oh, okay, right there. Where she? Oh, use that one in post. Oh, you have the water ready. But I'd like to show them the salt in the water. Let's get the water. Okay, we're ready to go here. All right. How many of you out there are familiar with kimchi? So it's that fermented, spicy, kind of sauerkraut-like, um, raw sauerkraut-like um, substance. Where's the little man? Are you all able to see me? I was looking at a man, now I'm looking at just a graphic. <laughs> Is anybody there? I see you, looks good. Okay, Perfect. just let, can, can I just stay looking at one of you? It helps. Yeah, yeah, maybe mom can fix that. Okay, just let me look at one of you because then I'm really talking to a human and not a voice. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get started with our kimchi. Okay. All right, kimchi is typically fermented with different vegetables in it. So not only is it cabbage, and we have, we have red cabbage, and we have a regular green cabbage that we're using. But we're also going to put some other things into our kimchi that's going to give it some flavor. We're going to get some other fermented vegetables with it, which is really cool as well. So 
what we're going to be putting in our kimchi is I'm going to grate some carrot. We've got green onions. We have peppers that we're going to put in there. I'm even going to chop beet tops from those beets that we just juiced. We're going to put some of those in. And we can also grate some beets, which is pretty cool. And we also have, did I show you green beans? Green beans, garlic, and I showed you the ginger, I do believe already. So those are the things that we need for our kimchi. But before we get started adding these things, we need to prep our cabbage and get that soaking tonight. And then tomorrow you come back here and we're going to finish the kimchi, correct? Yeah. Oh, okay, we'll have that tomorrow. All right, that doesn't need to soak right now, does it? Okay, <laughs> all right. So we're gonna go ahead and get our cabbage ready for you. And we're gonna do it really lickety split quick in our food processor. You all can see this, right? Let me just move things down a little bit. <laughs> yep, looks good. Blade, is that the yeah. blade you wanted? Okay. So we have our Cuisinart food processor here. And I'm using this blade that's a slicing blade and it's kind of medium slice, not super thin. Well, that's pretty thin. I would make it a little bit wider. So just kind of medium thick. And so we're going to use that. You can certainly use a mandolin, but it would take a little longer. And for the sake of time, we're going to get started. And you're going to want to big hole. Is that what mm -hmm. you want? That's fine. Okay, so for this, I'm going to use part of a red cabbage. And we're going to go ahead and put this in. Is that hooked up, sis? Yes. Okay. And we're going to shred our cabbage, our red cabbage right now. Ooh, we do this. <laughs> That's a little bit. There we go. I'm being too generous here. I need to scale that down a little bit. It's stuck. Know what they say about red cabbage it has more vitamin c than an orange so we have our red cabbage now we're going to do our green cabbage mm -hmm. we go ahead and put our beautiful cabbage that we have here all shredded and now i'm going to go ahead and do our green cabbage So I'm going to do about half of a green cabbage as well. Like that. Very 
Josh. Okay, so I'm going to do for this dip. Okay, and then you have our water ready, right? Yes. Okay, and our probiotic tomorrow. Right. So I'll let you explain what you just did with the water. Okay, I took four. I took four cups of water and two tablespoons of salt, and we use Himalayan salt, but some people even use the kosher salt. Um, we haven't experimented with that one though. And then what you do is you just make sure it's kind of dissolved in there. And then you just pour it in. But you want to make enough, it looks like we're going to have to make another. You want to make enough to cover the vegetables. And normally, what we forgot is a daikon radish. It's in the refrigerator, but you got to peel it and stuff. We'll just we'll add that tomorrow. We can the add rest that of after it. we get off after the veggies. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make another batch of water and salt. The importance of doing the water and the salt is going to help this to leach out the cabbage juice in the water as well. That's right. And so what you're going to get is you're going to get a very kind of cooked texture to the cabbage that's nice and soft like a sauerkraut without cooking the cabbage. And so it's going to retain all of the essential nutrients because you haven't cooked the cabbage. So anytime you cook something, a plant, it's going to heat that up. It destroys vital enzymes denatures the proteins and and you're just not getting the same quality food as you would as if it's raw so she got a little more salt and a little more water and we want to make sure that the whole thing is going to be covered in water another reason for that too if it's not completely covered with the salt and water it could mildew which is could be a problem as well okay so you there's plenty of water in this now what we need is a plate to cover this. Let's see, maybe this one. Yeah, it'll be big enough. I think it will. You can just a, hold it down. Take a plate that's big enough to uh, keep press it down, is what you want to do to hold that cabbage under the water. That's right. And what we normally put on here would be like a jar with water in it. You can do that. Okay. Use that jar that we're going to use. How about that? <laughs> yeah, that that'll be really heavy. You could even just put halfway, mm -hmm. just to explain the jar. Oh, okay. So we're putting the jar with filled with a little bit of water to keep down the plate. Otherwise, it's going to float, and then the cabbage is not going to stay immersed. So you can fill this jar with water, or if you have a mason jar in a smaller smaller bowl. Just go ahead, put it on top of the plate, and it's going to fold it down, and the water actually is coming up over the plate. So you know that you've got the cabbage covered up. So we're going to leave that overnight, right? Yes. Okay. So that has to sit. It's going to do its job. It's going to get that cabbage nice and soft. Then we're going to revisit this tomorrow. So be back here tomorrow so we can finish our kimchi and put the other vegetables in it. Okay, cool beans. Now we wanted to make today rather a savory day for you. And so the other thing that I've prepared is some um, seeds. We eat a lot of salads here. Can you give me the escalade for this? I think it's over there. We eat a lot of salads here at Life Tree. We have them for breakfast. We have them for lunch. I mean, every meal is salads. So we like to top our salads with yummy salad. The toppers. And one of the things that we make here is a delicious seasoned seed. So what I have here is two different types of seeds. Now your seeds are going to have your good healthy fats in them. Those fats, those omega-3 fats that are good for your mental health, your mental well-being, they give you the lift. They're beneficial fats that we need. And I have pumpkin seeds which is a good source of zinc. And I have sunflower seeds, which I think has um, silica in them and selenium. 
So those are good sources for those minerals. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to season the cup. And I think I'm going to make them separate batches so that we can keep them separate rather than mix them together. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my handy dandy spatula. And I have lots of garlic here and we really overdo the garlic here probably a lot, right? <laughs> because we're garlic people. We're garlic people. Those kind of people that you're around and they just <laughs> have garlic stench on them mm -hmm. and you're like, whoa, but we love it here. So we use a lot of it in yeah. our dressings. We make a lot of sauces and dressings. And in fact, in that cookbook that I showed you, there's a lot of yummy dressings and sauces that are oil-free, guiltless. So for these seeds, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this garlic minced up and I'm gonna do it lickety split because I have about 25 cloves here and I'm gonna throw it in the food processor with our S blade. This is our S blade, shaped like an S. And we're gonna turn this on and we're gonna mince that. This is a quick, easy way to do it, honestly. Get this cloak ready. Give me a couple here, sis. Okay. Oh, you need more for my kale chips. Okay, so oh. we have our garlic. It's nice and I wanted a little more mince than that, so I'm gonna let it roll a little bit. Oh, that smells so good. <laughs> fire breathing dragon garlic. The kind of garlic that makes your eyes water. See that? Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Okay. So I'm going to take our pumpkin seeds to start. Now, these have been soaking, and you want to leave your seeds to soak at least, I would say, four hours. If not, leave them overnight, even. You can get them soaking in the evening, come back, drain them the next day. So what does soaking do for our nuts? Well, it helps to make them more easily digestible. When you take that hard nut and you soak it and you get it to the point where it's ready to sprout, your body's going to digest that more easily. More easy. Your sis. Okay, so I have our pumpkin seeds. And what I'm going to do is we don't add any oil to them. I'm going to add tamari. Many of you that follow me, you know that I use a lot of coconut aminos here instead of, you know, um, things like the tamari, but I do use the tamari from time to time. They use tamari up here and I'm gonna use some tamari to season these. You really don't need the salt if you use a tamari, honestly, if you use enough of it. And I'm pretty generous with the tamari because these are salad toppers. You're getting a few on your salad that's really gonna make your salad pop, pop in your mouth. So we've got our tamari going on there. That looks good. Remember when you soak your seeds, you wanna go ahead and drain them real well. And then I'm gonna put some of our amazing luscious garlic in there. I'm gonna save some for our sunflower seeds, but that's quite a bit of garlic, but that's okay because it is, we all enjoy it up here. Maybe since you can use a little spatula and get some of that in there. Oh, okay. Um, another thing that I add, I have some granulated onion. We're going to put some of that in there. So these are going to be nice and kind of real seasoned, pop in your mouth, seeds to put on your salad, on soup. There's so many different things. They're very versatile. You can do many things with them. Smoked paprika. What is the chili powder? I honestly like to put a little bit of chili powder on mine because it, it just makes them spicy. So that's what you can do. I'm gonna put a little bit of this chili powder. It has a cumin in it, very yummy. Okay, so these are nice and seasoned and they smell amazing. And there you go, there you have the seeds. You see that, those beautiful pumpkin seeds. So next, what we're gonna do is I'm going to spread these out on a I had those in the oven. You do not wanna put your dehydrator plastic racks 
and screens in the oven, but lack of space and countertops, that's what I did. So anyway, we're going to dehydrate these. So they're not going to be cooked. Again, when we eat things in their natural state raw, you're getting more of the benefit, the nutritional benefit. So I have our, our screens and our trays from an Excalibur um, dehydrator. <laughs> And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread these out on the T-Flex sheet. And we're just going to spread those out into a thin layer. What is that one? That one with the black candle. The offset spatula. I'm going to use this offset spatula. That's what this is. And it's just gonna spread them nice in one layer. And we're gonna get that going here. Okay, these are so easy to make, so delicious. They're nice to have on hand because you can always flavor things up with these. I mean, I've even ground them up and put them in loaves and made, made little, um, what did I make last with them? I made a uh, falafel, raw falafel ball using some of the seasoned seeds that were raw. So it was all raw, but it was very, very good. So I'll let you see this. You see that? There you have our seasoned pumpkin seeds on the tray, ready to go. And the dehydrator, we're gonna put this on about 110 and these will probably take a little more than, a, I would say 24 hours, yeah. about overnight. Um, because the reason being is when you put the Teflex sheet, when you're using that, the air doesn't circulate completely. So they take a little bit longer mm -hmm. to dehydrate. Mm -hmm. But I like to keep things on about 110. 110 Very is good. a good temperature because then you're not cooking it. When you take it up higher than that, you essentially are doing some damage to the food. So we're gonna get started next on our sunflower seeds. You can just set it, I don't know, up there on the, yeah. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with our sunflower seeds. And look at all these sunflower seeds. These are so good. Like I said, I've used them for other things. Once you've got them seasoned, you pack them in a mason jar with a lid on it so it's nice and airtight. And you can have these just on hand to use for different things, soups, salad, loaves, other recipes that might call for like some breadcrumbs or something of that nature. Um, and you're doing something gluten-free, this is a good addition to loaves and stuff. So. I'm going to go ahead and add the tamari on this. And again, these are going to be so good. We're going to put our garlic and I've got a nice load of garlic here to go on there. As I said, garlic, you know, there's so much we can do to build up our immune system just by what we put in our mouth and consuming garlic and raw foods, juices, is an excellent way to boost your immune health. Make you less susceptible for the bugs that are going around out there, super bugs. So we can again add some onion granules to this. We can add our chili. Now you could add something else like I have here, um, you know, it was good before we added some curry. We made some curry sunflower seeds. Those were pretty good. Do you think I should make curry? Make them different than the chili? Okay, you that's a good it? idea. Yeah. Okay. I've got some curry powder. So we're going to put in the curry. And that's going to make it a real pretty yellow color too. It has a turmeric in it. That'll be very pretty. So we've got our onion, our garlic in there. Yep. Other benefits in here, the sulforaphane, sulforaphane in the onions and garlic. 
are very healing because they're killing those microbials that are, you know, harmful, toxic to our bodies. So we have our curry sunflower seeds. And we we'll get our other <laughs> out of the oven. Yeah. I'm gonna get our other tray, our little screen, and our tough luck sheet. And we're using that so it doesn't drip through and make a mess. We're gonna need a couple more of those, and all running good because I can crawl underneath. I'll we'll do that. No, but I'm gonna have to put them. I guess I don't have to demonstrate. So, where is my chips? Yeah, my chips. Okay. Unless you want to dump those in here, you can dump them in. That'd be fine. Dump what? These in there? Yeah. Uh, I made a sheet for the chips. So, there you have it our oh. sunflower seeds. I think you guys were bearing with us in this little space. We've tried to set everything up today where you can see it. Now these are going to get nice and crunchy and crispy, completely dried out. They're just lovely. I'll let y'all see that. Ta-ta! Going to get those nice and dry, put those in the dehydrator, and have them tomorrow for our salads. All right, here you go. And I'm going to get set up for... All right, sorry to abandon you there for a moment. Um, we're going to transition now because I am putting the seasoned seeds into the dehydrator. So I wanna fill it up. It is a nine tray dehydrator. And so we wanna make sure when you're running that thing, you're spending the money on that electricity, that little fan is whipping around and that hot air, that we really fill it up and make the most out of it. So we've decided today that we're going to do some kale chips because we want everything that goes in there with these seasoned seeds to be savory. You wouldn't want to put um, fruit in there to dehydrate with your seasoned seeds because that is not going to be a good flavor for your fruit with the garlic and all. So just think that way, sweet with sweet, savory with savory. So today I have on our menu, we're going to make some kale chips. And this is so here's our beautiful kale. Now kale is just one of those, I would say, you know, the king of all greens. They say the darker the green, the better it is for you. It's more cleansing for your liver. Kale and high in um, calcium. And so we want to make sure we're eating our greens and I put them in everything. I mean, you can make a smoothie, you can put them in a salad, you can dehydrate them like we're doing now. So I have these here and we're just going to take a minute to de-stem them. And I wanted you all to see us step through the process. So here we go. We just hang on to the stem and yank. You want to help me, sis? Sure. Um, I'm going to go like that. And actually this can move too. Okay. I'm going to bring over the vitamins. So we've got our kale and we're just de-stemming it right now. This is beautiful curly head kale. Curly leaf. I like the curly leaf rather than the flat leaf when you're making the Dino kale because it's going to make a nice crispy kind of a chip-like product. So we've got our kale. It's good to save your stems. You know, when you're doing this raw cooking, you know, have a bowl that you set aside for all your little bits and pieces because you can always throw those in a juice. You don't want anything to go to waste when you're dealing with all this beautiful organic food because it can be expensive. That's why we're encouraged in the spirit of prophecy to have gardens for our own food. Especially you can see that nowadays. It's a crisis that we're in and that food looks like it's going to be problematic to get the kind of food that we've had in the past at the prices that we've had. So really good to have gardens. And now that we're coming up on the spring, good time to start that. So I also have some purple here. 
know what you call this, purple kale. Yeah, purple kale. <laughs> I think that's what they call it. You know, if your kale's a little limp, like we had this kale, it, it was in the refrigerator a few days, and so our purple kale got a little limp. But look at that. We, I just stuck it in some water um, a few hours ago, and it's all nice, and it's got all the turgor back in the leaf, nice and stiff again. And so that's all you got to do. You just get some cool water and give it a little plunge bath, and it'll get nice and firm again. So we're going to save those stems because I like to make juice, and it has a lot of good nutrition in those stems. Okay. Can I get a tosses with mine? I got one here. All right, so now we are going to make here for you, um, I'm going to make the sauce. Now this sauce is going to be a little different from the sauces that I made in the past that maybe some of you have seen because we, we do things a little differently at the center. We're dealing with some folks that really have some chronic conditions. And so there are some things that we've eliminated out of their diets, one of which is cashews. Don't use any cashews here just because of the concern for any mold on the cashews. Um, sometimes cashews can be molded. So just to ensure that none of the clients are getting mold, um, it's not something that when their immune systems are compromised, especially, that we really want to take extra care to make sure that doesn't happen. So, so I want to be able to, yep. Okay, let me turn it off. Okay, so instead of cashews, this is what I've done. I have almonds, and these almonds have been blanched. And all you have to do to blanch an almond is boil some water, bring it to a boil, drop those almonds in the water just for momentarily. Then you want to strain them and give them a cold bath. What happens is the skins, the outside of the almond, becomes very loose. And you can literally just slip them between your fingers and take that skin off. And then you have these beautiful white almonds that you could use instead of cashews. It's a little more labor intensive, but it's really worth it. Um, I would say they're less acidic as well than a cashew. So as far as health benefits wise, it's going to be healthier for you. So we're going to take our cashews. And I'm doing a couple things here today. I really wanted to show them the cheese. And I think we have time. So I'm only going to use half of these. For well, you only need one cup. Huh? You only need one cup. For the cheese? No, for the sauce, for the kale chips. We don't have that kind of kale chips. There you go. All right. I'm going to take my smoked paprika. I have my onion. It's over there. My knife. Uh, uh, that one. Okay. So for this recipe, I am using some smoked paprika. I'm using lemon juice and I'm putting in a pepper. We're not using any nutritional yeast. I know that may come to it as a shock to some of you because so many of our cookbooks have nutritional yeast. And honestly, guys, I love it, love it, love it as much as you do. I love it on popcorn, um, <clears throat> our cheese dishes, and these things do use nutritional yeast. But there are some drawbacks with that. And working here, sis, do you mind giving me some more? <clears throat> working here, I'm learning new things, one of which is it is a yeast. Yeast, molds, fungus all have mycotoxins, which are toxic. It's the byproduct of the fungal metabolism. And so with your, with your yeast, it is, even though it's not an active living yeast, it still has the mycotoxins that is concerning, especially when you have compromised immunity. So we don't use that here. I've also heard Dr. Russell Blaylock talk about nutritional yeast as being excitotoxic. So that is disconcerting. Mind you, I don't consume loads of nutritional yeast. When I've used it, it's, it's in moderation. But some people do use nutritional yeast loads, and it's not it's not very safe to do that, honestly. So, um, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I need to get a drink of water. I'm getting a little dry. Oh, what am I doing? I have my juice. Oh, that is what I needed. The ginger. Okay. Woo, that is strong juice. Wow. All right, so we got our smoked paprika. We have our almonds. 
assist if you have a little water. Dang. Yes, thank yeah. you. That's perfect. <laughs> sure. Okay, so there is our Vitamix. I know you guys are familiar with this kitchen wonderful amazingness. Vitamix is a high powered, high speed food uh, blender. And we're going to, look at how is this? We're going to go ahead and put a little bit of the lemon juice in there. A little bit. About what? A couple of tablespoons. Yeah. Maybe a quarter cup. Okay. And then I'm going to let the Vitamix do the work. I'm just rough chopping up some onions. I'm throwing in there. Um, also, we have our garlic. Just rough chop this up like that. That's going in our Vitamix. And we're also going to put a pepper in there. Take out the seeds here. And I have a beautiful yellow pepper. Rough chopping that up. Okay, and that's gonna get blended as well. All right, the other magic to this is our smoked paprika. Is this, if I can have a spoon if you don't mind? Like a teaspoon? No, just a regular spoon is fine. Okay, we're gonna add some water to blend this up. <laughs> it's different. Yeah. It's a, this is the only thing on this side of the kitchen. How oh, about fine. a long one? Thank you. Thank you. So okay. our smoke pack we get is really going to give this an incredible flavor. And we're sending this loving um, little snack off with some of our medical missionaries that are headed home tomorrow. So I'm going to put a big heaping spoonful of our smoke paprika in there. I use that much. What do you think about that? I'll wait till when I taste it. <laughs> it's lovely, this. <laughs> All right. No salt? Um, yeah, we need salt. Thank oh. you. Where is our salt? Do you know how much or you're just eyeballing? It? You guys, I actually really do have recipes. So I will share those with you. Get the exact measurements, so you're not doing a little bit, a tad of that, and a tad of this. Sometimes that's how I cook them. <laughs> Never turns out the same twice. All right, so we're going to turn on our Vitamix and get this nice and smooth. Might need our plunger for this. Okay. I don't know. I kind of like it this way. Oh, do you? Oh, okay. Um, you have those gloves. The one, the, the ones over here, sis. They're over there. <laughs> I don't mind. Do you guys mind if Elena steps in front of you for a minute? Because I really would prefer using gloves. Um, I just would feel better about it. Because now I'm going to add the sauce to the kale. I'm breaking up my kale leaves. You don't have to. They are going to shrink, but um, we kind of want to stretch these for everybody. So I'm just going to break up the big leaves here just with my hands and some of the real humongous ones. Okay, sis, we will clear this off and bring over our tray that you have ready. Have another little sip of this. Woo, that looks lovely. 
So you're done with the machine. Yes. All righty. So I just have some gloves. You don't have to wear gloves. You're in the privacy of your own home, but I'm going to wear gloves because I'm going to be putting on this sauce and massaging it a little bit into the kale. And so here we go. Our beautiful sauce. I mean, you honestly, you're not going to miss the nutritional yeast. It is still amazing, but I'm not policing your kitchens. If you want to throw in a little nutritional yeast with that, that's up to you. So I'm going to pour this sauce. It's a nice thick sauce. We're going to pour this on here and then I'm going to coat these leaves. <laughs> Elena's laughing at me. Come over here, Elena. Tell them why you're laughing. <laughs> Because I never put that much in in mine. <laughs> really? Oh, I like I, lots of sauce. On she, mine. we're both different cooks. I mean, we love cooking together and stuff like that. And <laughs> I usually, I'll make a whole quart of the sauce and use it for this. <laughs> this is only two bunches of kale, and in my recipe book, <laughs> it's two bunches of kale, and you make a quart of the sauce, but you will only use maybe half the sauce for two bunches of kale. Three, three to four bunches, I believe, is in my in my book where you can use the whole cord. Okay, the sauce is what makes these like amazing. It needs lots of sauce on it. Don't listen to her. But we'll tell you tomorrow what it's gonna taste like. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all good. It's amazing. all good. Woo! That onion, I can feel in my eyes. Okay, okay. So we're going to get this nice and coated. This is where you get the love on your food. Just love on it. I do love food. I'm so glad it's permissible. And we're going to get this beautiful food in heaven. I can hardly wait. Sit down at that table with Jesus. And he's going to gird himself. And in his mercy, he's going to serve us. The humility of God. You know, we should be serving him, but he girds himself to serve us. Beautiful. That's a beautiful visual. You know, it it just kind of makes everything else, brings it into perspective. And it's like, why would we want to miss that? You know? I don't want to miss that. Do you want to miss oh, that? Oh no, no. So I, I want to be at that table. I want to sit next to Abraham and David and Job, I, I want to work in the Lord's kitchen. <laughs> Do you think there's going to be work in the kitchen? I don't know. I I don't know. <laughs> but I don't think so. I mean, I mean he's you gonna pick it and you eat it, right? Or maybe you do some sort of prep with it. I don't I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna find out though, aren't but we? But I just I love food. I love the colors, you know. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Okay, and so. the Lord's blessed us with the talent of, of cooking. And you know what's so much fun is experimenting with different foods. And sometimes I we come out that. in the kitchen and we really do experiment. Uh, yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Between us both, a little bit of this and I turn my back. She's got a little bit more of that in there. Okay, so let me show you what my nicely <laughs> coated kale chips look like. <laughs> okay, there, these are them, their kale chips. Now, these are really going to be good. Check it out. Check that out. See how nice and coated those are? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you don't want some little spindly amount of sauce on them. We want them nice and coated. You're going to get your kids to love these. And so we're going to plump these up on our, we're using a Teflesh cheat as well, just because it's easier to clean, you know, and you don't have to dig it out of the screens. That's right. So I'm putting the kale chips on our Teflesh sheet. And you see, I'm not pushing them down. I don't want to do that. I'm going ahead and leaving them in all their be. plump perfection. Oh I actually, goodness. when I put them in the dehydrator, excuse us, excuse when I put us. them in the dehydrator, I'll actually skip a row and that leaves height. Yes. It yes. leaves height so that you don't have to press them down. Don't press them down. Leave them this way because they're, they're nice and crisp and plump and I love it. Check it out. I mean, wow. You got to admit that is like amazing. Look at that. I know you can feel it, right? You can feel it through that. Okay. 
All right, so we're getting two trays out of here and we had about two heads of kale. Yeah. And we used all of our sauce. So let me just clean that with the spatula, get it real good. And I think we're gonna be ending right on time. Okay, I'm gonna pass it over to the beautiful and lovely Elena, my sous chef. And I'm going to plump these out on this tray. So we've got two trays of the kale chips. And sometimes I take one that's kind of looking a little bit like it didn't get much coating on it. And I'm gonna kind of rub it around in the bowl to get the rest of that sauce out of there. Okay. I only have about five minutes and there's something else I wanted to make the cheese. There's something else I wanted to show you guys. It's amazing. So don't worry on. about the Thank time. As huh? long as you, don't worry about the time here. As long as you have time, keep going. Okay. I'm sure All right. people have questions too. Huh? I'm sure people have questions afterwards too. Okay. I, I don't, I don't, am I going to be able to see the questions? The people will come back and you can see them. Okay. And then we'll ask you. Okay. Is this being recorded for later? It's being recorded on YouTube, yes. Okay, all right, so I have something special for you guys. This is like so cool. <laughs> oh God, all right, Elena, how about you? Elena, come on through. I know you guys can see our animation. This is real. It is not fake, phony, put on. We get this excited <laughs> in, the in the kitchen. It's like crazy, I don't know what it is. It's like, I love food. Okay, so um, I need the uh, vitamins. We're gonna make oh. our cheese. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, it's a phenomenon. That's all I can say. Do, do we have a probiotic? Um, yes, okay. So this is an instant pot and um, this ah, magic. I, Love it. <laughs> I love this thing. Okay, guess what this amazingness does? You will not believe it. It makes cheese. Did you know this thing made cheese, you guys? It does. It really does. It has a yogurt button. But if you do your nuts the right way, you can have cheese. So we're going to start it tonight. And tomorrow, you come on back here, y'all. We're going to have our cheese. So <clears throat> I'm gonna get another swig of my um, nutrient dense juice to help me finish up this class today. <laughs> Whoa, I feel it. I feel the energy coming off that. That's just like, wow. Okay, woo. All right, so we have our, I need a little bit of water system that coming down. Bit of water. Okay, hand me that whole thing. It's fine. So our beautiful almonds. Now you can do this with cashews if that's what you have. But again, this is going to make a nice product here as well. It's beautiful white almonds. We're going to put this in our vitamins. And I'm going to need the plunger for this because we did it really small. You really do need the high speed vitamix and the plunger when you do this. So we're going to add a little bit of water, just a bit. You don't want to add too much. This is a super thick almond milk, as thick as you can get it. So that's why we need our plunger. Okay, this is just like, uh, this isn't a very good texture. So I'm gonna need to add some more water to this because we want it thick, but we want it really smooth. It has to be smooth. It's a nice creamy. Add a little bit more water. 
And we're going to keep adding just a little bit because, like I said, we don't want to overdo it. Still not creamy enough. It has to be super creamy. So I'm going to have to add just a tad bit more water. It's kind of like a soft, um, kind of it, it's getting almost. there. It's getting there. Like a, almost like a feta. Feta cheese, if y'all have seen that for a few years, I don't know if you can remember such a thing, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> True feta is from goat. So we're adding just a little bit more water. We want this. <laughs> 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 Antics in the kitchen. <laughs> It's looking pretty good to me. I want y'all to see this. See that? It's nice and creamy and it's soft and it's squishy and it's, it's nice and creamy. It's not at all gritty. Okay, so now what we're going to do we're going to add our probiotic. Now we're adding a probiotic. The reason why is we want to be particular in the strains of bacteria that are growing in this. So we're going to add our own probiotic and we have something here that we use and uh, I'll, I'll give that information to Sandy so she can share that with you and how you can get a hold of that. But this is looking amazing. You really want this as dry as possible. So we're going to add I think I, yeah, half a teaspoon. We're gonna add a half a teaspoon of the probiotic to this. And I'm gonna give it a little more of a stir by blending it just another little bit. Okay. There we go. Okay, so we've got our cheese. Clean that off. I don't like to waste a thing. Got my spatula to clean that off with. Now, for those of you that are familiar with the Instapod, you have your container, and we're going to go ahead and put our cheese in here. So we're going to put our nice cheese bowl. See that? Now 
Now I would say to do this in the morning. That would be my best bet for y'all. It's not something you want to do overnight because I think it would sit too long. Can y'all hear me? Put this in in the morning and then come back later in the day when it's done. Because if you put it in overnight, you know these Instapots stay warm. And what happens is it continues, it'll keep cooking it and it, it'll dry it. It may even toast it on the bottom. So you don't want that. So you want to do this in the morning so that you can keep an eye on it because you want it perfect. Okay, so I'm very particular about getting every little bit of that out of there. And uh, I will work on that when I'm off the show with you guys. But for now, we've got our cheese in our pot. And I'm gonna take the spatula and just kind of spread it around on the bottom little bit. That's it. It doesn't need to be perfectly spread out down there because what you're doing is you're heating it under a control heat and that's really what you're looking for. So we've got our cheese and um, we're going to put the lid on that bad, bad boy and then we're going to push the yogurt button. I don't have this plugged in. You want to throw me that plug so they can actually see the lights go bing bing. And I'm going to scrape this off, so save that for me, okay? All right, I want you to see all the special effects. So there it's off. And so then we're going to push the yogurt button. That's it. And now it's set. Nine so hours. this is going to be nine hours on its job. When it's done and all the steams come out, that's when you want to take it off. Okay. So it's starting. There we go. Then you just walk away and leave it. And it's going to ferment under temperature, regulated temperature. And we're going to come back. And tomorrow, I am going to have a beautiful cheese for you. And we're going to season that cheese up. So come on over here, Elena. We just want to thank you so much for being part of our cooking at Life Tree. We've really had a great time today. We hope you have. We didn't quite get through everything. Um, our cookies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we wanted to. Want make, we wanted to make cookies, but do we have time to make cookies? Okay. Ah, <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Then we're gonna go ahead and make our cookies. That's you. No. I'm sure everybody agrees, right? Huh? I was just saying, I'm sure everybody agrees. That's listen. Yes, we agree. Okay. okay. Continue. We all agree. All right. Uh, field chip <laughs> and and uh, cookies. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> and it's the pot cheese. Uh, I'm in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I am so excited right. about that cheese. <laughs> I know it's amazing. <laughs> okay, um, this, I'm going to let, I'm going to let the beautiful and lovely Elena lead out in this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You, you should have warned me. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> this is her signature recipe. That's what I'm going to have her. Oh, no. I'm going to be her sous chef. <laughs> okay, I'm going to check those walnuts. Oh, where's the, uh, the milk? The oh, milk. I'll go get that. Okay. okay, just start talking. I'll go get the milk. Okay, so you we all know that cookies are really easy to make. And um, this one is the oatmeal raisin cookie that's uh, in my cookbook. Actually, it's uh, a spin-off of, um, uh, what is, uh, Charmaine's, where she used to work. Before. Modern Manna. Modern Manna. Modern Manna. <laughs> and so we've added four cups of oats and two cups of spelt flour, I believe. Yep. Two cups of spelt, okay. And we basically just put everything everything together. How much uh -huh. was the salt? Did you? Oop, I don't know. Tad nap of salt. Okay, tad nap. <laughs> tad nap, hang on, I got it. Let's have a little bit. Tad nap of salt. We will give you this recipe, okay? Ooh, too much, too much, too much, too oh, much. Oh, too oh, much. oh, 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 too How's much, that? too much. Oh, 
just a, okay. Yeah, maybe a half a teaspoon of salt. Salt, you don't need very much when you're making desserts. And then we've got, it um, looks like about it. Don't forget cardamom and coriander. Oh, yeah. Uh, it looks like we got about a cup of coconut, shredded coconut. That's right. It was a cup and a cup of raisins. And we're going to do uh, a teaspoon of the coriander. Oh, this is not my measuring teaspoons. It's all but that looks good. good. <laughs> Okay, I'm good. chopping up the pecans right now. Yeah, you can use, you can you always use different, different nuts and even seeds if you want to, if you want to make it more like a granola bar yeah, kind of style. Yeah. You could even throw in banana if you want, you know, or well, crack, not not crack, uh, apples. We have apples on yeah, but I like the combination that we have here today. Yeah, we're going to do applesauce in this because it called for, um, Oh, it calls for oil. Right. That's right. The recipe calls for oil. But uh, since we're doing it for people, oh, there you go. We're going to put in a couple of applesauce instead. And so to make up for the difference of the oil. It's also calling. Did you tell them you put a teaspoon of coriander? Oh, yeah. And Sean. Teaspoon of coriander and a teaspoon of cardamom. cardamom. Mm -hmm. Okay, Yum. that really goes well with the apple. No worries, you guys. You don't have to write it down because we're going to give you the recipe. Is it in the cookbook? It yes. is, but we're going to give it to you anyway. Okay. And I'll give you my recipes. The seasoned seeds and the rest of it. Okay. All righty there. So we're going to do some of this. Is she likes to measure. I don't measure anything. Yes. I use a little bit of this little bit. Of egg. But the problem is my stuff doesn't always turn out the same. And I'm not the best baker in the universe. Okay, I'm going to measure this way. I can kind of eyeball this. So but then again, about that I don't much. have to taste anything. I mean, I can see flavors in my head, you know? It's like I can see the flavors, I can taste it, and I was like, I don't need to taste it. I can like, okay, yeah, that I'll go with that cardamom for you. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. yep, that's what we do. Yeah, and okay. I can put a whole recipe together in my head, and I'm gonna squeeze this bear until it's totally empty. We're putting honey in this, you could use other sweeteners. Do y'all know monk fruit? You know, monk fruit for those of you that want to be sugar free. I, I do sugar free around here. So this is kind of an aberration. It's like we've got some contraband going on. And I don't know where we found that ball of honey, but that's like, whoa. <laughs> so we, we'd be hung up by our thumbs. <laughs> we still might be. We're sneaking it in there. <laughs> okay, here is the peak I need. I need something that's going to get this bear out of here. Okay, here's the pecans. We didn't, we try to melt this stuff. It's, it's very raw honey. I'm going to get the monk fruit. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is monk fruit, and this is a white sugar replacer. I'm going to tell you, I've never had a monk fruit. So it says, um, from the remote highlands of Asia, Buddhist monks achieved enlightenment through meditation. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be saying this on here, but this is what it says. Prayer and pure living. The monks discovered a two fruit prize for its sweetness. The sacred fruit was called named monk fruit. After them, I guess. Okay. <laughs> so that's why I my <laughs> They found it. They found it. They yeah. found it. So, so I don't believe in all that. Brew ha ha. It's just what it's called. So it doesn't have any calories to it okay. because it's a non sugar sweetener. And because this recipe actually called for one cup of sweetener, we're going to add a little bit of the milk. Food. Or you can even add stevia, but some people don't like the aftertaste. I'm a stevia holic, though. I am not crazy about it. I'm going to be honest with you. 
that stevia, that little aftertaste thing. I don't dig it. It just, oh. yeah, it just has some, it has a funny flavor. So we're going to put in a little monk fruit, which doesn't have a funny flavor. At all. That's all? Huh? <laughs> you want it's more? okay. No, we'll see. No, we'll just, it's not going to burn out a little bit. <laughs> okay. And if you'll pour in that milk. Okay. We need the milk. Yeah. Okay. We're going to put in some milk. And when we're working with it, we're going to This see. is some homemade milk I made. This has, um, this is a coconut oatmeal milk I made just with oats. And I put it in some water and some coconut milk and added some monk fruit to it. And there you have it. It's a nice creamy consistency. Just delightful. How's that working for you? You might need some more applesauce, huh? I'm... Yeah, I might. I don't know because we want the cookie to be kind of like um, more of a cookie dough instead of cake. Mm -hmm. But it looks like, hope you folks don't mind, but I'm going to use my hands. I'm a hand person. As long as you don't lick your fingers. Yeah. Because that's gross. Oh, I know. I, don't like I learned a lot when I ran my restaurant. We Every time I did anything, it's taboo. It's washing my hands constantly. Yep. Yeah. In culinary school, if we touched our hair, licked our fingers, scratched our face, back to the bathroom, <laughs> they would make us wash our hands. Why don't you put a little bit more applesauce in here? It looks like it needs a little bit. We need a little more applesauce. Just remember, it needs to be moist enough to mix and stick together. Okay. Okay. But I have these two. Oh, yeah. Throw them in. Okay, so I'm adding the pecans. Mm, I Thank love you. pecans. So we've got raisins and pecans and applesauce. It and looks lovely. Um, Can y'all see that show? It and of course, get their mouth watering. It's oatmeal, delicious. oats are very good for you. So far that I've heard anyway, unless somebody's got it. high in fiber, different point of view, but okay. All right, should we get our little, little scooby ball? ball? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are way too much fun in here. Okay, okay, so it she's like it's gonna be okay. To me, huh? um, it resembles a little bit like granola. Okay, so I've got my scoop. Is that good, sis? Yeah, they're gonna be small, but it's see, not. that's the thing. I don't think it's wet enough. Okay, then do we need some more applesauce? Milk. I don't have it. Well, I have there's a little bit of so, coconut milk back there. Or water. Even give me water. It's too much applesauce. Let's do some water. Right there in the glass. There's a glass right there that's got the water. Right where you got the picture. Yeah. Just give me about an eighth of a cup. Would quick oats have made a difference? Probably. Yeah. Um, your quick oats quick would oats. be stickier. These are the whole oats. Yeah, we're using whole oats. So that. And this is three Yes. So we preheated our oven without the plastic trays, right? Huh? <laughs> yes. I took the plastic. I wanted trays. to make sure that yeah. the hide the trays were not, not in the oven. Right. Okay, so you preheat That's your oven to 350 and yeah. we're gonna make our little balls now. Try it. Okay. Ooh, those were a little better, huh? Yeah. Can yeah. we press them down at yes. all? Okay. Yes. She says we press them down. Ooh, I, I just want to eat it raw. It looks amazing. You can, actually. Mm -hmm. But some people say you can't. But they kind of resemble a little oat burger. Yeah. Okay. These are going to be nice for these. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff that you could really involve your children with. You know, everybody's home, this whole house arrest thing. And um, 
you can get your kids in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? Get them involved. Do something fun. And this is building a life skill. You're teaching your kids how to cook. You're getting them excited about food, about eating healthy, and seeing that you can actually make things without refined sugar and fats, you know? So take advantage of this time. Teach your kids. Get my kid's book and go through it with your kids, huh? Yeah. You know, teach them health. Also, if you wanted to on this recipe, instead of using the applesauce, oh, instead of using the applesauce, replace it with peanut butter. Okay. Yeah. Peanut butter will take the place of oil too. If you're a peanut butter so person or this. even almond butter would work. Okay. But All right. yeah, those look great. They do look great. So we're going to go ahead and put these in the oven. Whoop. Oven you see that? Yeah. Aren't they beautiful? We're going to put those in the oven. That's the right one. Okay. Okay. Here they go in the oven. <laughs> and how long do we leave those, Miss Beautiful um, Sunshine? Twelve to fifteen minutes. Twelve to fifteen minutes in the oven. We're gonna pop those out. We're gonna have this stuff to show you tomorrow, if and when you show up at four o'clock, three thirty. I don't know what time you want us. I think she uh, said around. Tomorrow you're. Tomorrow you're at four. Let me see. But you can go as long as you want. Okay. We, um, we have somebody at three. So okay. four, and then you can go just like now as long as you want. People will be happy to hear you. All right. Well, we'll be back, Thanks, Sandy. We'll be back with Sandy and the gang at four tomorrow. We look forward to showing you these recipes. Thanks, you guys. Bye bye. Bye. I have a quick question no, for you. Charmaine. You put the um the garlic in the dehydrator and the um, the seeds. Yeah. Up the garlic and you put it in there. Does the garlic separate itself and dry and you have little bits of just garlic or does it no, stick? No, 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 because I soaked the seeds. I mean, the question was, did the garlic fall out of the seeds? Um, because you've soaked the seeds and then I've added the tamari, the garlic actually does stick. Of course, you're gonna get some residual that might fall out, but they, they, they clump together. The okay. seeds clump together. So when you go to sprinkle the seeds on your salad, you're not just sprinkling one, you're usually getting a little clump of that. Okay. And, re and remember, when you when you do your garlic in your food processor, if you've got, a, especially if you have a small one, those work really well, is to make it really, really fine. Yeah. Don't make it chunky, but make it really fine, like really minced. Those definitely will stick. And we don't have a mincer. Honestly, I haven't seen one around this joint. So that's why I put the garlic in, in the, the food, food processor. processor so it gets really, really fine because I can't shop it that fine. Um, okay. Anyway, yeah, it Thank should stick just asking fine. about the probiotic that you put in the cheese because you just had right. water. Yeah. Um, what we, was the reason? I, I have that available here, but you can use any probiotic that you might typically take for your gut health. Let's but say you're taking, taking some cap. Let's say you've got some probiotic in capsules. You can just take one of the capsules, break it open and put that in the cheese. You know, use a capsule or up to two capsules per, I would say two cups of cheese. Mm -hmm. But we, we do have a great probiotic here that we use that has some really good strains in it. And you guys, I'll leave that information with Sandy, how to get a hold of me if you'd like to get that. Okay, because you were making, I know yogurt has that in it, but cheese, this is more like cheese, not yogurt, and you're just putting- No, we're, we're using the same thing. It is exactly the same thing. The only difference is that was a thick milk, very thick, whereas if we were doing a yogurt, it would be thinner. Okay. Same uh, idea. Okay, but it's and just- one, one, we're going to make savory, and the yogurt we would have probably sweetened up with some vanilla and some stevia or monk fruit or something. Okay, but the probiotic is for health. Right, that is going to help reculture the good gut floor. Okay, thank you guys. Okay. Any other questions from anybody out there? Go ahead and ask anybody. All right, yeah, guys. I was wondering, oh, where are you guys located? Up right there. now we are up in the Pacific Northwest in Coeur d'Alene. Okay, okay. Are you guys at a, a shop somewhere? 
or we're at a lifestyle center we're at an inner city clinic it's a okay. it's an urban outpost in the city and uh it's under the indigenous nation and we have different things modalities and treatments that we do here as well as a medical missionary school that we're finishing up here okay that's very cool okay yeah. thank you yeah you're, you're welcome, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Bye, you guys. See you Bye. tomorrow. Have a nice evening. God bless. Thank you. I was just going to answer the cookies are gluten free. All right. You made me hungry. I've got to go eat now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that was good. Well, thank you, Bob. Charmaine, you still there? Yeah. Somebody had a question. Was that you, Jerry? It, are those cookies gluten free? Yes. Okay. They are. If you're oh. using gluten free oats, I don't know. Wait a minute. That's spelt flour. Spelt flour is usually gluten free. People uh, can eat that, but you could put any kind of flour in Right. It. So oh, instead it's of just the, something to bind it together, instead of the spelt flour, you could use a rice flour. Oh, good. Okay. But I'll always make sure that you get your gluten free oats. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, you guys. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. The one that wanted to ask you hasn't asked. Jerry, go ahead. Jerry, Peggy, are you there? Hello. What? I don't have a question. I don't know. Yes, go ahead. I don't have a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jerry came on and said he had a question. Oh. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think it was David. I, oh, I do. I do. Do, do you deliver? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Well, I'm glad okay. you Zoom, Charmaine, because since nobody can go anywhere, it's nice to have you here with us. Yes. Okay. I've enjoyed it a lot. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Bye. God bless you. Bye. I'll, I'll be texting you. Okay. Bye. How will we get the recipes? She'll send them to me. Ah, that was my question. Okay. And if you're really nice, I'll send them to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I could be that. <laughs> But Can I, you put I, the file on the on the Facebook page? Yeah, she would send them to me, and then I'll get them out to you guys. Monica, I gotta go. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. okay. Bye. 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 Try that cheese. Yep, we'll see tomorrow what that's like. You have an Insta Pot? I don't have an Insta Pot. Oh, they're great. I know. Oh, oh. Marvelous. They're I'm wonderful. Sure that you can make beans in just a matter of minutes. Yeah. yeah I do. Potatoes. Yeah. They're they're so delicious. fast. 20 minutes, you can have your beans cooked. It's great. And they yeah, taste I, fine and they're all healthy for... and everything. Yeah. They're oh, delicious. Not work. Chris and them have one. Yeah. I just bought one. They're wonderful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, Chris? You have one. Have you used it? Yeah, yeah, we have an instant pot. We use it all the time. What do you um, do it? Uh, she usually makes some kind of bean stuff. Yeah, you know, usually like the chili kind of stuff, actually. But and she does do other stuff. Some raw beans. Uh, yeah, yeah, raw beans. And they cook some yeah. fast. Uh, cook yeah, it does cook faster. Can yeah, tell me how it it's like pressure and heat. Yeah. But I, mean, is I don't know. Microwave? It's got a bunch of buttons on it for different stuff. Like she said, the yogurt button. I've never done that one. It's steam cooking. Steam cooking. So it's not like oh, a microwave, okay. is it? No, it's it's more with more with steam pressure. Okay. Oh, like a pressure cooker. Yeah, yeah. yeah I do sweet potatoes in there. They are so good done that way. And how long do they take? Oh, I don't know. Ten minutes. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. cool. All yeah. right. Yeah. Awesome. So good. Yeah. Are any brands any better than others? Or are they just all the same? Um, I got an off brand one because I didn't know if I'd like it. And I found one at all these cheap and I bought it. And I want to get the regular Instant Pot one now because that one has the steel inside. Whereas this cheap mm. one has that nasty coating one. 
Okay. So once the coating goes on this, I will get a regular Instant Pot one. So that's better to get. I found, I didn't realize that when I bought this one. And isn't the regular one called Insta? I -N -S Instant Pot, yeah, it's called. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's okay. Insta Pot. And get, Insta. get that one, that's the one you want. Yeah, yeah. there it is. Oh, it is say Instant. I thought it was I-N-S-T-A. No, no, it's so like I. <laughs> that's yeah. the one. Everybody calls it Insta. Insta, is, yeah. Yeah. Oh no, it is. It's instant. Yeah, instant pot. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. I'll have to get one someday. All right. Yeah, the prices come down on them quite a bit from when they first. Yeah. Came I'm on out. Facebook, a lot of people. And then um, you can there. use your twenty percent coupon at Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. When they reopen. Or you know, or you get a forty or fifty percent one off at Kohl's. Costco uh -oh. had it for thirty five dollars off, like around a few months ago. So you can always check. Yeah, Costco. Okay, Costco's yeah. open. Yeah, you can get good deals on them sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Eddie. I see you. You guys are quiet. <laughs> but that was good, and she'll be back tomorrow. So I think that was fun. Oh, that was really good. Yeah. Probably couldn't have come down here this time. I don't know, but now she was able to do that. And this, and um, I wanted to ask you guys, Sherry, are you is she gone already? Do you yes. guys, did you guys see her on the full screen or did you have your gallery view on? Sherry was seeing her as a little tiny, like when I put it on gallery and you see all the little tiny boxes. Oh yeah, we watched full screen. Okay. She didn't know how yeah, to full put screen. on. So somebody help her because she kept saying, can you make her bigger? And all she was seeing, like what I'm looking at right now, the little, all the little tiny squares. And that's what she Ooh. was seeing her on. Oh gosh, that would be bad. Yeah, and I told her, I said, oh, I hope nobody else does that. I said, please make it, you know, speaker view, not gallery. I don't know what yours is called. Yeah. Mine says that because it's my Zoom or how you guys. I have, I'm on a tablet and I have these dots on the bottom and I just have to go to the second dot and then it's full screen. Yeah. Okay. That's what I have on the Chromebook. Okay. Well, yeah. she, I'm on a computer, so help me remember tomorrow and tell her because I feel bad if that's all she sees. Most of the time, oh, when somebody yeah. shares it because it gets big for you guys, yeah. but if you don't have it that view, it doesn't. So. Yeah, it's so much better on the full cookies. screen. Christopher, what is that? We want it. What'd you make us? We're waiting. <laughs> I don't know what those are, but they look good. You think they're cookies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you try one, see if it tastes like a cookie. <laughs> no, these, they're meatballs. Uh, what is it? Yeah, they're meatballs. Oh, okay. They're made out of be uh, oh, beans. I saw, and... I saw that cute picture. I wish everybody could see it of um, uh, that Sarah sent of um, Elijah wanting to help. Oh, yeah. A picture of Elijah wanting to help, and it had him holding the little spoon. Oh, oh yeah. yeah oh yeah he holds everything he's got everything oh yeah everything 